there are tons of passionate music producers out there, right? What makes Unorthodox and Gorilla Beats different? His vision, it went beyond just his own success. He wanted to help other producers to give them that creative freedom and ownership that the traditional music industry often doesn't. He saw how producers were always kind of stuck in the background, and he wanted to change that. And that's where Gorilla Beats comes in. They're not just about making beats, are they? It's more like a movement, a group of producers who are in control of their own destiny. Exactly. And that global first strategy, that was a big part of this vision. Think about it. By connecting with producers from all over the world, they're tapping into all these different sounds, styles, perspectives, things that traditional companies, those focused only on their local market, often miss out on. It's like they built this incredible pool of talent drawing from the best of the best, no matter where they are. I mean, we're talking producers from the U.S., Switzerland, Ecuador, Germany, Algeria. The list goes on. But how did they actually connect with all these producers in the first place? The Internet had to play a huge role, right? Definitely. Unorthodox was early to the game when it came to using platforms like YouTube and SoundCloud, you know, to showcase his music and connect with other producers. And remember, this was back when those platforms weren't as crowded as they are today. He was building a network while everyone else was still figuring things out. So he was a pioneer in the online music scene. Mm. But connections will only get you so far, right? At some point, you need to turn that talent into something tangible, something real. And that's where that Gorilla Beats flag really starts waving. They didn't just connect producers. They created this collaborative environment where those artists could work together, learn from each other, really push the boundaries of what music production could be. And they had some serious success early on, didn't they? Oh, yeah. We're talking millions of views and streams internationally for Unorthodox's music. Yeah. And instead of just writing that wave solo, he decided to bring those international collaborators together under the Gorilla Beats name. It's amazing to think about the potential of that kind of global collaboration. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious about the details. How did they actually work together? Were they all in the same studio? Was it all remote? What did that workflow look like? That's where their online skills come back into play. They used digital audio workstations, data BUs, and online collaboration tools to make music together no matter where they were physically. It really shows the power of technology, how it can break down those geographical barriers and create something special. It's like they were building the future of music production, and they were doing it years ahead of everyone else. But it wasn't just about making the beats, was it? They also focused on selling them, creating a way for their producers to make money. Exactly. They understood that creative freedom has to be sustainable. So they created this system for selling beats, leases, and licenses. That way, producers could actually generate income from their work, which just gave them even more power to pursue their artistic vision. So for someone who's not really deep into music production, can you break down the difference between selling a beat versus leasing it versus licensing it? What does that actually mean for the producer and the buyer? Sure. Selling a beat outright means you're transferring full ownership to the buyer. They can use it however they want, and the producer usually doesn't get any more royalties from it. A lease, though, that gives the buyer limited rights to use the beat, often for a specific period of time or for a certain number of copies sold, and a license is more customizable. They outline specific ways the beat can be used, and it's agreed upon by both the producer and the buyer. So they created this whole system where producers could make money from their work, and it's set up in a way that's fair for everyone involved. That's pretty smart. And they weren't afraid to share their success with others, were they? Not at all. After making a name for themselves internationally, they came back to their local scene and started offering opportunities to producers who were just starting out. Some of them hadn't even released a beat online yet. It's that classic pay it forward mentality. And that local focus wasn't just about charity, right? It was about building something solid, strengthening their roots, and creating a sense of community. Exactly. They knew that building a lasting movement meant investing in the next generation of producers, even those right in their own backyard. And this commitment to building community is something you see throughout their whole story. I'm curious about this global first, then local approach. Did they face any challenges managing such a diverse group of producers? Oh, you bet. Imagine trying to coordinate schedules, overcome language barriers, and deal with cultural differences all across multiple time zones. It takes a special kind of dedication and flexibility to make that work. It sounds like a logistical nightmare, but also incredibly rewarding. What were some of the benefits they got from taking this unconventional path? Well, for one thing, they were able to find and work with a wider range of talent. 
much wider than if they'd just focused on their local market. They also gained valuable insights into different musical cultures and trends from around the world. It gave them a unique edge in the industry. So they're not just making beats, they're creating a global musical conversation. That's pretty powerful. But let's not forget about the individual producers in this network. What kind of impact did Gorilla Beats have on their careers? That's where you really start to see the magic of their approach. By providing a platform, resources, and a supportive community. Gorilla Beats helped these producers get exposure, develop their skills, and build lasting careers in music. They weren't just making music, they were building careers, helping people achieve their dreams. I'm starting to see why you call this a movement earlier. It's more than just a company. It's a group of passionate individuals who are united by their love of music and their desire to create something truly special. And their story, it's far from over. Okay, so we've got this global network of talented producers, a commitment to community, and a founder with with a vision for empowering creators. But what about the music itself? What are they actually making and how does their approach influence their sound? That's a great question. And it takes us right to the heart of what makes Grill Beats truly stand out, their unwavering dedication to creative freedom. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Tell me more. So for Grill Beats Creative Freedom, it's not just some slogan they throw around. It's really the core of everything they do. Every decision they make, it's built on that idea of creative freedom, from the producers they work with to the projects they choose to take on. So it's more than just letting producers make whatever kind of music they want, right? What does this creative freedom actually look like in practice? It's about giving producers control and ownership over every part of their work. Remember how we talked about that system they have for selling beats, leases, and licenses? That's a perfect example. They give producers the power to decide how their music is used and how they get paid for it. That makes a lot of sense. It puts the control back in the hands of the people who actually create the music. But what about the creative process itself? How does Grilla Beats make sure their producers can fully express themselves without any limits? They actively reject a lot of those industry norms that can stifle creativity. Like a lot of studios will rent out their space to anyone who can pay. It doesn't matter what the project is as long as they get their money. But Grilla Beats, they do things differently. They're picky about who they work with. Mm. Wouldn't that limit how much money they could make? It might, but they're more focused on building a specific kind of creative environment. One where producers are encouraged to experiment, take risks, and really push their own boundaries. Mm. They're not interested in just churning out generic tracks or chasing after whatever's trendy. So quality over quantity. Mm. Protecting that creative spark, even if it means saying no to some gigs. Exactly. And they apply that same philosophy to their own record label, Gorilla Records. Remember how we talked about Unorthodox's vision of producers becoming more than just beat makers? Well, Gorilla Records is where that vision really comes to life. So they're not just providing beats for other artists. They're producing their own artists and releasing their own music. It's like they're saying, hey, we're not just the guys behind the scenes. We're artists, too. And we have something to say. Exactly. And that commitment to showcasing their producers as artists in their own right, that's a big deal. It challenges that traditional hierarchy in the music industry, where producers are often seen as less important than singers and songwriters. It's like they're leveling the playing field, giving producers the recognition they deserve. It goes beyond just recognition. They're providing resources and support to help their producers grow their skills, build their own brand, and reach a wider audience. They're not just throwing them in the deep end and hoping for the best. They're giving them the tools they need to succeed. That's what's so great about this story. It's not just about making money. It's about building something bigger, something that empowers creators and pushes the boundaries of what's possible in music. And that feeling of empowerment, it's contagious. It attracts talented producers to their network and it inspires them to do their best work. But let's be real. Not every producer is going to fit into this model, are they? What about those who are more comfortable working within the traditional industry structure? Of course, Gorilla Beats' way of doing things isn't for everyone. Some producers might prefer the stability of working with established labels, even if it means giving up some of that creative control. So it's a trade-off, creative freedom versus the security of a more traditional path. Exactly. And there's no right or wrong answer. It all depends on the individual producer's goals, what they prioritize, and their personality. Okay, so Gorilla Beats is attracting producers who really value that creative freedom. But how do they actually foster that freedom within their network? Well, they don't try to dictate genres, styles, or trends. They encourage their producers to experiment and take risks. They want them to explore their own unique voices, even if that means creating music that's outside of the mainstream. So it's about letting go of that need to fit in 
to be commercially viable no matter what. It's about creating art for the sake of art. That's a big part of it. And that can be really liberating for producers who are used to working within the constraints of those commercial expectations. It must be amazing to have that kind of creative space, to know that you're not going to be judged or pressured to conform. But how do they maintain quality control without stifling that freedom? It seems like a really delicate balance. It is. They have a team of experienced producers who offer guidance and feedback, but they never try to force their own artistic vision on anyone. They're more like mentors, helping producers refine their ideas and achieve their own goals. So it's a collaborative process, but in the end, the producers are the ones in control. Exactly, and you see that reflected in their approach to contracts, too. They offer their producers much better terms than what you typically find in the industry. What do you mean by better? How are their contracts different? They often give producers a bigger share of the royalties, and they don't lock them into those restrictive long-term deals. They want their producers to feel valued and respected, not exploited. It's like they're redefining what it means to be a music producer, giving them more control over their careers and their creative output. And that's a powerful message, especially for younger generations who are becoming more and more disillusioned with how the traditional music industry works. But is it a sustainable model? Can Gorilla Beats keep this level of creative freedom as they get bigger? The music industry is super competitive, and there's always that pressure to conform, to follow trends, to play the game. Those are valid concerns. As Gorilla Beats grows, they'll have to be careful to protect those core values. They're definitely going to face challenges. But I think their commitment to creative freedom is more than just a business strategy. It's a fundamental part of who they are. So they're not just chasing trends. They're setting them. And that's what makes their story so compelling. It's a reminder that even in a tough and often unforgiving industry, there's always room for innovation, for new voices, for a different way of doing things. It's a story about the power of believing in your vision, even when it goes against the grain. And it's a story that's still being written. We've talked a lot about Gorilla Beat's commitment to their producers and their unique approach to creative freedom. But let's switch gears for a minute and talk about their impact on the music itself. How has their global first strategy influenced their sound? That's where things get really interesting. By bringing together producers from such diverse backgrounds, they've created this sonic tapestry that's rich, textured, and unlike anything else out there. So they're not just making beats, they're creating a global soundscape. Give me some examples. What are some of the unique elements that we hear in their music? You'll hear influences from all over the world. African rhythms, Latin melodies, European electronica, Asian instrumentation. It's this fusion of styles that's both familiar and completely new. It sounds like they're breaking down those musical barriers, creating a truly global sound. But how do they maintain cohesion with so many different influences at play? It's a delicate balancing act. They encourage their producers to embrace their own individual styles, but they also create this collaborative environment where those styles can blend and evolve. So it's not just a random mix of sounds. There's a deliberate intention behind it. Exactly. And that intention is to create music that's both innovative and accessible. Music that pushes boundaries while still connecting with a wide audience. Like they're creating a new language of music, one that goes beyond cultural and geographical boundaries. And that's a powerful thing. Music has this ability to connect people in ways that words often can't. And Gorilla Beats is using that power to create something truly special. We've talked a lot about their global reach and their unique sound, but let's go back to their YouTube origins for a second. Remember how we mentioned that they transformed their original channel with over 250,000 subscribers into Gorilla Records? Right. And that move, it wasn't just about changing their name, it was a strategic decision to use their existing audience to promote their artists and their own music releases. They're not just relying on traditional marketing channels. They're building their own platform and reaching their audience directly. Exactly. And they didn't just forget about their roots in music production education either. They created a whole separate channel just for beats and music production content, sharing their knowledge and expertise with aspiring producers all over the world. That's smart. They're building a community nurturing the next generation of creators, and establishing themselves as experts in the music production world. It's a brilliant strategy. They're using their platform to educate, inspire, and empower, all while promoting their own music and artists. Okay, we've covered a lot here. Their global first strategy, their commitment to creative freedom, their unique sound, their innovative use of YouTube. But one question keeps coming back to me. Is this model really disruptive? Can they actually change the game for producers? 
That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And to answer that, we need to look at the challenges they face, both the internal ones and the external ones. Okay, let's dive into that. What kind of obstacles are standing in their way? Well, on the inside, just keeping that level of creative freedom going across this huge network of producers, hundreds of them all over the world, that's a challenge in itself. Yeah, I bet. Keeping everyone on the same page, making sure the quality stays consistent, managing everyone's expectations, that's a lot to handle. Absolutely. And the bigger they get, the harder it gets. They'll need to find ways to grow without losing those core values. It's like walking a tightrope, right? Mm -hmm. Growth on one side, keeping their unique identity on the other. Yeah, exactly. And then on the outside, they're operating in this music industry that's still mostly controlled by these big labels and established players. Right, the old guard. The ones who probably aren't too happy about a company like Gorilla Beats coming in and shaking things up. You got it. There's always this resistance to change in any industry. And Gorilla Beats, they're challenging how things are normally done, disrupting that traditional power structure. It's like they're building a whole new model from scratch. And that's bound to cause some friction. So they're facing resistance from the establishment. What else? Well, you've also got this constantly changing landscape of music consumption, streaming services, social media algorithms, this never-ending demand for new content. It's a fast-paced, ever-changing world out there. And it can be tough for any company to keep up, especially one that's trying to build a model based on artistic integrity and creative freedom. That's a really good point. It's not enough to just make great music, right? Hey. You also have to be smart about how you market it and get it out there in this digital age. Definitely. They need to be adaptable, innovative, constantly evolving to stay ahead of the game. Think about how fast things change in the tech world. It's the same in the music industry. It sounds like a pretty tough challenge. But do you think they're up to it? I think they have a real shot at making a difference. They've already shown how committed they are to their vision, their ability to adapt, and their willingness to challenge the norms. They're not afraid to experiment, to take risks, to forge their own path. And they've already built a strong foundation with that global community and their own record label. They're not starting from nothing. They've got dedicated fans, a proven track record, and a network of talented people who believe in what they're doing. Right. They have a lot going for them. But at the end of the day, their success will come down to their ability to overcome these challenges, to stick to their values, and to continue to empower producers in meaningful ways. So it's not a sure thing, but it's a fight worth having. Yeah. And their story, their journey, it's inspiring to anyone who believes in the power of creativity, collaboration, and challenging the way things are usually done. Absolutely. It reminds us that even in an industry as complex and often unforgiving as music, there's always room for new ideas, new voices, new ways of doing things. It's a reminder that the music industry doesn't have to be a cutthroat world, where only a few people succeed while everyone else struggles. There's another way, a more collaborative and empowering way to create and share music with the world. And whether or not Gorilla Beats becomes a huge mainstream success or changes the whole industry, they've already made a mark, started a conversation, and shown everyone that there's another way. And that's something worth celebrating. Yeah. So... What does all this mean for you, the listener? What can you take away from Gorilla Beat's story? Well, I think it's a call to action to support artists and producers who are pushing the boundaries, to seek out music that truly speaks to you, and to never underestimate the power of creative freedom. It's about thinking critically about how music is made, who benefits from it, and how we can support a music ecosystem that's fairer and more sustainable. It's about recognizing the value of art that's made with passion, integrity, and a commitment to something bigger than just making money. It's about supporting those who are daring to be different, to challenge the rules, and to create something truly unique. Exactly. And who knows, maybe Gorilla Beat's story will inspire you to go out and create something amazing yourself, to challenge the norms in your own field, mm -hmm. to build a community around your own vision. The possibilities are endless. So until next time, keep exploring, keep creating, and keep the music playing.